In this video we're going to look at how you can use the information available on the location screens on SCADA to troubleshoot communications to that location. Most of the location screens have a COM statistics area in the upper right hand corner of the screen and this will have uh, typically at least COM efficiency and often will have last communication time and even a barometer reading and we'll discuss what those mean as we go. You'll notice looking at the COM statistics section on this screen that all of the COM efficiency numbers are blinking green and that means there's been an alarm on those points that has since cleared meaning the alarm condition is, is gone but no one ever acknowledged the alarms and typically the number we care most about is the COM efficiency today and so let's see what the alarm was on that point. Like any data point on the SCADA system we can click it and get a menu with various options for uh, viewing data about that point or interacting with it. In this case we're going to display the alarms on that point. And we can see that we had an alarm on COM efficiency on the 21st at 12.35 a.m. And we can see that the COM efficiency dropped to 56.67%, which is lower than our alarm threshold. So now we can go back and look at other data to see what may have happened. So the first thing we may want to do is look at a history on the COM efficiency today and see what kind of activity has been going on. We'll use the Display Historic Trend tool because that gives a good idea of what's been going on just at a glance. And we can see that at some point in the last evening, the value of COM efficiency dropped below the 60% threshold and even touched down near the 50% threshold. And if we wanted to see the specific value at one of these points, we can hover over these little yellow dots and we will get the timestamp and the value at that time. And just through experience, we can tell kind of what's going on on this one most likely is that this occurred just after 1 a.m. And one thing to remember when troubleshooting calm stuff is that the trend we are viewing is going to be shown in local time. So whatever time zone you're in, it will pick up on your computer's settings and show you the values on the trend in local time. This drop happened at 1.26 local time, but the thing to remember is that our SCADA server is running on Mountain Standard Time with no daylight savings, and so are most of the RTUs in the field. So that puts it right after midnight, which is contract hour and is also the time when communication statistics roll over and zero out and start accumulating fresh for the day. And what can happen with COM efficiency is if the first poll or two after that midnight rollover uh, come back as failed, then the COM efficiency can drop very quickly because it's just started up for the day and there aren't many samples to average out. And so you can drop very quickly down to a low percentage. And we see that after a bit it climbs back out of that and it gets back to something more like what we'd expect. We can use the other communication statistics to see how it's doing now. The last calm time is right where we'd expect it. Uh, less than a minute ago it polled, and this site is polling on a 15 minute interval, so that's just fine. The barometer is at zero, which is right where we want it. The barometer is an indication of comms health that will react quicker than the calm efficiency today, especially near the end of the day. It can take a while to drag the calm efficiency percentage down below the alarm threshold but the barometer will increase rather quickly. The way the barometer works is a value of 2 is added to the barometer value every time that a poll is missed and a value of 1 is subtracted from it every time a good poll goes through. So if comms go bad the barometer will go up very quickly and once good comms are restored it will go down a bit slower. So a value of 0 is what we want a value of 100 is where the barometer will cap out, and if you see a value of 100, it generally means that you've lost comms with that site. One other piece of data that can play into 
comms troubleshooting is the battery voltage. Often if battery voltage goes too low, communications will be cut off and it can be difficult to troubleshoot because it will be intermittent. Often it will be in the middle of the night because the solar panels are not recharging the batteries at that time. But when the sun comes back up, they start to charge the batteries and communications are restored. This can also happen if there's inclement weather, a lot of cloud cover, and the solar panels are not recharging the batteries. You can get an interruption in comms and it will restore seemingly for no reason and it may turn out that the battery voltage has just dropped low enough that it turns off power to the communications equipment. A great way to troubleshoot that is with the same tool we just used is to look at a historic trend on the battery voltage and by default it will pull up about a day's worth of data and you can use your scroll wheel on the mouse to zoom in and out and get a bigger picture. And if we right click on the trend we have more options for interacting with it. One of my favorite is the pan tool which allows you to grab it with the hand icon and simply move it around. And so we can see the general charge and discharge cycle for the battery voltage and we can see that it hasn't gotten anywhere close to our alarm thresholds down at the bottom. So on this location, if we hadn't determined the cause already, we could rule out battery voltage as a problem.